these two mice are twin sisters and have changed what we think about genes forever. One is brown and healthy, while the other is yellow and obese. The only difference between them? Their mother's diet. I am Dr. Lucia Aronica, lecturer in epigenetics and nutrigenomics at Stanford University. And today I'll show you how the tail of these two mice can help you rewrite your genetic story through food. I'll share three game-changing discoveries about how food can communicate with your genes. Now, it's not about changing your DNA. It's about learning how to work with the genes you already have in smarter ways. First, I'll explain how your genes actually work. It's probably not what you think, and it will change how you view every meal you eat. Second, I reveal the specific foods that can help dial your good genes up and your bad genes down. No, it's not like some genes are bad guys while others are Marvel superheroes. All your genes are important, but just like how the Hulk is great in a battle, but you wouldn't want him showing up to a dinner party, some genes need to know when to activate and when to stay quiet. I reveal which foods can help maintain this delicate balance. And finally, I'll show you how plant and animal foods are perfect partners in supporting your genes and how these could offer an olive branch in our often polarized nutrition debates. Before we dive deeper, let me show you something about identical twins that will help you understand how genes really work. For years, we have been told that our genes are our destiny. Have bad genes for weight gain or aging? Too bad, you are stuck with them. But here's a question that challenges this common belief. Why do identical twins who start with exactly the same DNA often end up feeling and looking so different as they age? One might stay healthy while the other becomes obese or diabetic. How it is possible with identical genes? Look at this picture. It shows the DNA of two twins at age 3 and 50. At age 3, their genes have similar activity or expression. See all this yellow? But by age 50, everything changes. Those red and green colors indicate genes that became more or less active in one twin. Same gene sequence, but different gene expression. Therefore, your DNA isn't a fixed program. It's more like a computer's hardware that can run different software. This software, which we call epigenetics, sits atop your genes and can tell them when to turn on and off, up and down. Those yellow, red and green colors on the twin's DNA those are showing us the epigenetic software in action, revealing which genes are expressed differently in each twin. And just like you can update your computer software, you can influence your epigenetic instructions through your daily choices like diet, exercise and sleep. 
This explains why identical twins can develop different health outcomes despite having the exact same genes. They are essentially running different software updates on the same hardware. And here's what's really exciting. The most powerful way to update this software is through something you do multiple times every day, eating. Let me explain what happened with these two mice because it reveals something fascinating about how food talks to your genes. Both mice inherited a specific gene called aguti, which typically leads to yellow fur, excessive appetite and obesity. But their mother was missing specific nutrients her epigenetic software needed to work properly, what I call epinutrients. Therefore, only her brown daughter was able to switch off the problematic gene, while her sister gene stayed permanently active, leading to yellow fur, obesity and diabetes. This shows us that it isn't just about having good genes, it's about giving them the right instructions. And this isn't just about mice. In nature, we see this incredible power of nutrition affecting genes everywhere. Take honeybees, for example. Every bee in a hive starts with the same genes, but only one bee becomes the queen, living 20 times longer than the other bees and growing much larger. The secret lies in royal jelly, a special food that turns on the genes that transforms a regular bee into a queen. Therefore, food isn't just fuel. It's one of the most powerful signals to your genes. Once you understand this, you will never look at a meal the same way again. Now, let me show you the specific foods that can help you write a healthier genetic story. Do you remember how I mentioned that the mother mouse was missing special nutrients that her epigenetic software needed? These special nutrients are what I call epinutrients. Think of them as the code that helps your genetic software run smoothly. Epinutrients come in two main types, metal donors and epibioactives. Metal donors are the chemical currency of methylation reactions. These reactions play a key role in building a certain type of epigenetic switches and in many other biological processes like DNA production, immune function and helping your body detoxify from environmental toxicants. The main metal donors include methionine, an amino acid found in all protein, especially animal protein, nuts and seeds. Folate, present in green leafy vegetables, liver and legumes. B12, mainly found in shellfish, fish, meat and liver. Only 5 grams of clams cover your daily B12 needs. Choline, rich in eggs, liver and seafood. And betaine, found in beets, spinach and quinoa. And here's something interesting. While both P12 
plant foods and animal foods contain these epinutrients, animal foods are actually our richest and most bioavailable sources. For example, liver contains eight times more folate than spinach, viewed as the king of folate, and its form is more easily used by our body. And don't worry, if you are like me and can't stand the taste of liver, there are plenty of other sources. The key is to complement nutrient-dense animal foods like shellfish and eggs with plant sources like spinach, beets and nuts. That's why traditional cultures were often prizing organ meats. They were intuitively protecting their genetic and overall health. Let's talk about the second type of epinutrients, epibioactives. These are specialized programs that can turn specific genes on or off. They do so by working with special enzymes called writers and erasers that can add or remove instructions in your genetic software. While found mostly in plants, some powerful ones come from fish, like omega-3 fatty acids and asaxanthin. That's what gives salmon its pink color. Let me show you three fascinating types of epibioactives. First, polyphenols. Think of your daily pleasures and colorful foods here. They are abundant in tea, coffee, dark chocolate, 80% or higher, colorful veggies and aromatic spices like turmeric, pepper and rosemary. As an Italian, I have to mention here olive oil. It's literally liquid gold when it comes to epibioactives. Its polyphenols, like hydroxytyrosol, are some of the most powerful gene regulators we know for fighting inflammation. Then we have postbiotics. They are produced when your gut bacteria process fiber. The star player here is beauty rate, which gives healthy instructions to your gut cells genes. Here's a cool trick. Fermented foods give you a triple benefit. They provide the prebiotic fiber that feeds your gut bacteria, the probiotic bacteria themselves, and their postbiotic products like beauty rate. And finally, we have so-called secondary metabolites, or what I call food's secret software. These are compounds that only appear when you chop, crush, or chew certain foods. Think of them as compressed files that need to be unzipped to unlock their power. The most powerful examples are sulforaphane in broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables like Brussels sprouts or mustard greens, and allicin produced when you crush or chew garlic. Now you can see that happy nutrition is like a beautiful friendship between animal and plant foods. Plants provide powerful epibioactives while animal foods offer bioavailable choline, B12 and omega-3 fatty acids. It's like having two teams of programmers, each specialized in different types of software, working together to give you the best possible epigenetic software. That's why I love teaching about happy nutrition. It offers an olive branch in our often polarized nutrition space. 
instead of getting caught in dietary debates, we can focus on how different foods work together to support our genes. As a scientist, this excites me because it moves us from either or to both and thinking. And that's where the real breakthroughs happen. Now you understand how food can rewrite your genetic instructions. But you might wonder, where do I start? I have created a free guide that will show you exactly how to easily implement these concepts in your kitchen and daily life. Get it through the link in the description. And don't miss my next video where I'll reveal my top kitchen tricks, including how to multiply garlic's epigenetic superpowers by 4000% with one simple hack. Hit subscribe and the notification bell to catch it. I'll see you in the kitchen.